Brandon asked, is a recession triggered by Fed raising rates better than a recession that would be caused by trade or other factors that would increase the bubble? No, I, I don't think you can say some recessions are better based on what triggers them. Recessions are going to be determined by how deep they are, and some of that is going to depend on Fed behavior. So a lot of how deep a recession is, how long a recession is, how quickly we recover from a recession, how we recover, the nature of the recovery, the extent of the recovery. Uh, to a large extent, all of that is determined by the Fed behavior. So, um, you know, part of the reason that, that the Great Recession was as deep and as nasty as it was was because the Fed miscalculated, completely screwed up, it completely messed up. Now, I've often said I don't think they have a choice. They, they almost always screw up and, and because they, they – there's no market for them to, to be able to tell what to do. Uh, but they particularly screwed up at the Great Recession. Paul, uh, you know, uh, Bernanke will be remembered ultimately as a bad chairman of the Federal Reserve, not as the hero he wants us to believe he is. And uh, the Great Depression was caused to a large extent. So a recession that was caused by trade, a recession that was caused by trade and by a slowdown in, um, in production and consumption, uh, ultimately turned into great depression because of the Fed, because not the Fed raised interest rates, but it it contracted the money supply by other means. So the Fed has various means in which it contracts the supply of money. And when it does that into a recession, like it did in the Great Recession and it did in uh, in the Great Depression, uh, you get worse recessions that need to be. So the, the, the Fed... Now, of course, the real problem is that by the Fed's very existence and by it raising, lowering interest rates, expanding the money supply, shrinking the money supply, and so on, it's constantly distorting the market and creating creating bubbles, but creating malinvestment, creating investment in things that shouldn't be invested in, jobs where there shouldn't be jobs, no jobs where there should be jobs. It distorts the entire economy and it makes it very difficult for rational people to actually plan for the future and to, to, to invest and to, to produce for the future. And I think... I think ultimately where the United States economically is heading, it's really economically the United States is heading towards kind of stagnation. I, I don't see us heading towards a massive cliff and, and complete destruction. I see us much more as, as heading towards kind of a Japan outcome where we're just flat and just stagnating and very little is happening and that creates social unrest and more authoritarianism and political, political mayhem. So uh, to me, that is the great, the great risk is, uh, is the real stagnation. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.